Hi, I'm Megan Jennings. I'm a research scientist at San Diego State University, and I'm currently leading a project on ecological drought in Southern California. Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to do a quick summary of a kickoff webinar that we held earlier this spring about this drought project, where we're working to develop a framework for drought preparedness and proactive response. This project is a collaboration between SDSU, the Climate Science Alliance, the Desert Research Institute, the Western Regional Climate Center, and the Climate Hazard Center at UC Santa Barbara. And our work is funded by the Coping with Ecological Drought Program um, at NOAA under their National Integrated Drought Information System Program, that's NIDIS. So first we wanna start by defining drought. Well, I mentioned ecological drought. There's a lot of things that lead us there. Um, we can think about drought in terms of the weather, which would be meteorological, in terms of how it Im impacts um, hydrologic systems, which would be hydrologic drought, how it affects our agricultural systems or our socioeconomic systems, right? Because this, th these impacts can, can reverberate through everything that we do. Um, and all of these are really important, but what we're focusing on is ecological drought and how changes in water availability can affect thresholds of ecosystem vulnerability, impacts to um, ecosystem services, and create feedbacks in natural or human systems. So, you know, thinking about how drought will affect populations, species, communities, and how, how that scales in terms of how we respond. So we, when we respond, we wanna make sure that we are thinking about maintaining ecosystem processes, things like hydrologic flows, how can we support promoting um, and maintaining hydrologic flows? How can we reduce the risk of each ecologically damaging fire in the face of drought? How can that help with drought response strategies? And how can we promote post-fire recovery under drought conditions? And since this, this region, Southern California, is such a biodiverse region, we also wanna make sure that we're thinking about biodiversity and, and those natural resources and how they're impacted by drought. So we can prevent the most severe impacts for sensitive species, we can be undertaking drought-informed habitat management and rest restoration strategies that are aligned with our drought risks. So we're not you know, expending time and effort and, and funding on things that aren't gonna be successful or sustainable in the long run with episodic drought. So as part of the webinar, we um, uh, had a number of attendees. You can see we had 55 folks join us and we, asked a number of questions to help sort of set perspective and give us some guidance on how to, to proceed for this project to really develop a, a framework for how we respond to drought in our ecological systems and in natural resource management. So you can see we had good representation from different organizational types, including um, federal, state, local, and tribal governments, as well as nonprofits, academic institutions, business and industry, as well as members of the public. And one of the first questions we asked people was, how does drought or extreme precipitation, if this year has taught us nothing, it's that you know, extreme precipitation is the other end of the spectrum and we can't ignore that because it can have severe impacts. So how does that affect those folks who joined us in their work? And so you can see at the center, these larger words in the word cloud are the ones that came up most frequently. So people were concerned about wildfire, water supply, um, how do we mitigate those impacts, um, impacts on farming, impacts to wildlife, agriculture, erosion, environmental justice and restoration. So people, you, you can take some time and, and look at all of these, but really people were thinking about a broad range of impacts that we experience, not just ecologically, but you know, again, that reverberate through all, all of the, the things that we do. And so then next we ask people to describe how their organization is currently responding to drought. And so interestingly, and, and, and really great to see that um, roughly about a third said that they felt their organization was pretty proactive, had a plan in place and, and was working to implement the plan. But on the other end of the spectrum, you know, up to close to a quarter of respondents um, said that they felt like their organization was sort of sporadic in responding, mostly non-existent. And so part of the idea here is getting a sense for where people are and how we can best meet you with this project, um, where you are, and also how we can facilitate sort of um, a community of practice where, where folks can learn from each other, where we can see what those who are, who are being more proactive are doing and perhaps learn from what's been successful and what hasn't. 
So that brings me to um, our framework for drought response. This is what we hope to accomplish with the project. So as I mentioned, we really wanna foster and support that community of practice. Um, it's really critical. And in part, we wanna do that by working with you to identify priority research needs and products. Um, and in particular, improving and increasing the accessibility of regionally relevant information. What kind of drought information or ecological drought responses and information do you feel like you need to be able to plan in advance, make a proactive strategy, and then implement it? Where are the, what are the actions that you want to take? What are, what are the triggers? And how can that be um, applied across the landscape so we're not doing things just within you know, land boundaries or jurisdictional boundaries. Um, we're doing it across the landscape so it has an ecological impact. And then finally, we're hoping that um, these efforts sort of ultimately support strategic and science-informed decision-making that we can be doing again more consistently across the landscape. So to inform this, we have a lot of data that we are, um, have available to pull from, from a number of, of different um, prior projects or some of our collaborators. And this is some of the information that we, we wanna think about integrating to support you in drought decision-making. So information on climatic conditions, we have a number of drought indices we can pull from. We've um, done a, a, a number of projects um, where we're thinking about not only fire risk, but post-fire recovery. How do we ensure we're having successful recovery and, and ecological um, persistence after, um, after fire? Some information about bio biodiversity, things like priorities, vulnerabilities, or where do we have refugia that we want to protect? Um, water quality and quantity. And then finally, we want to think about the built environment as well. Even with ecological drought, these things are all um, connected. Our, our um, natural systems are inextricably linked with our human systems. So we want to think about the synergistic impacts and the values at risk. And so the idea is to take these different types of data specific to the Southern California region and, and combine them to help make it easier to make some decisions about how you want to respond to drought. Ideally, we'll put together some response and adaptation strategies that, that you guide us in, in developing. Um, this would include both short and long-term strategies. What do we do in the short term to respond to drought? And then over the long term, knowing that our region's be gonna become more arid, how do we how do we respond to that? Do we need a more of a um, coordinated drought monitoring strategy? And finally, how do we be more flexible and adaptive in our management? Again, considering that we are facing more boom and bust cycles of precipitation. And again, because we, we are expecting kind of these two ends of the spectrum, we want to take a scenario-based approach. And so the idea here is that we will create a sort of um, two-directional space where we think about a scenario where we have either more precipitation or less precipitation. And we can figure out you know, what are the kinds of impacts that we might want to plan for under extreme drought, moderate drought, or extremely wet conditions, or even average normal conditions? What would we do under each of those scenarios? And then we can help, we use that to help us define a process where we can identify vulnerabilities and strategies. We can collect information on you know, how, we, how we respond. Um, we can establish some frameworks and scenarios, really develop those strategies and actions, and then plan and implement. And along the way, have some triggers to kind of help us um, figure out when to respond and how. So as part of that, we, you know, we wanted to ask people, what would they like to see emphasized in a drought response strategy? Um, we want you all to drive this process. And so some of the things we heard at this um, kickoff were things about conservation, adaptability, habitat restoration, groundwater, biodiversity, collaboration. And that's exactly what we're aiming for is to work together. What can we do that, that um, supports biodiversity at a landscape scale and helps folks work together um, to conserve and protect um, our region's really critical um, and unique natural resources. There are a number of barriers that we know um, that you know, prevent effective response to, to planning for drought. And so we hope to address some of these, talk through them, figure out what, what might help people in particular working together to overcome some of these things like lack of planning flexibility, lack of budgetary flexibility, lack of a strategic plan, and lack of um, the ability to incorporate predictions into management action. So again, that's where the community of practice can come in. In particular, those who are being proactive, what can we learn from them and, and how can that inform 
more of a regional strategy that people can pull from and use in your, in your individual planning for your organization. So with that, um, I'll just leave you with uh, the fact that we need your help. Uh, we would like to, we're, we're seeking technical advisory group participants. You'll help us with developing the scenarios and the type of actions and responses that you'd like to see. And what does this framework look like to best meet your needs? Um, you would provide input into our data and research needs um, and, and inform that decision support um, product that would come out of the work that we're doing. The, the um, time commitment would be something like four to six meetings over the next 18 months. So we hope if you have that availability and interest in this work that you would um, visit this link. We can, um, it'll be provided on the Climate Science Alliance website along with these slides. And if you're interested, you can watch the entire webinar or sort through the slides yourself. Thanks, thanks for joining me and I appreciate your time and hope that you will um, check us out later and, and work with us on the, this drought project for the betterment of our region and our, our drought response in the future. Thanks. <laughs>